Hello, hello. Uh, ben here with another update for Mysterious Space development update. Uh, I've got a couple little things to show off. I've, I haven't got as much done uh, that I can show off these last couple days. A lot of what I've been doing has been uh, just moving around the code, refactoring, uh, making it easier to add new bullet graphics, which I can show you, and what kind of weapons are allowed to have which kind of bullet graphics. Uh, splitting up trees, which I'll also show you. Um, there was something else big. Oh, adding new liquid types. And there aren't any in the game yet, but but I'll talk about that too. I've also been working on a couple little UI things. For example, I can delete games. Sorry, please don't delete me. If you... Ooh, but it should probably move your little cursor up. Um, I also don't have anything here telling you that you can delete the games or any confirmation dialog. You just delete them. Um, but, uh, yeah, you can delete them at all, which is good. Especially... I need better handling of this. So from version to version, almost certainly the save games won't be compatible. And that is because I do crazy things like completely redo how liquids are stored. And so the previous levels, it, it, it can't load them. It doesn't have the liquid in the right kind of data. And the way I'm saving and loading, I wouldn't even know how to support previous levels. Actually, I can think of a way. It would be horrible to code, and I'm not going to do it. Uh, so, anyway, you can end up with a bunch of old games. Well, or at least I do, because I do so much testing. Probably a real player wouldn't. But you could end up with old games here that if you try to load, it'll give you an error message, or it'll crash the game, or something. Um, and that's bad. So you need to delete them, or, or you would like to, so you don't accidentally load them. But really, optimally, it should just not let you load them or show them. Um, or maybe it could show them but dimmed out and say, hey, this was for this version of Mysterious Space. You know, if you, if you want to play, you'll have to get that version. Something like that. I don't know. Uh, right now, it's, it's poorly handled. And so I, I, I at least offered this way to delete them. Anyway, let's play a game so I can show off a couple things. I just started it. There's nothing really here. But uh, we'll go into a wonderful ocean world. New bullet graphics. So here's one of them. And... Uh, okay, I was just seeing things. These bullets are all orange. I thought it was gradient. Um, so, rainbow bullets. I really hope we see an enemy that shoots rainbow bullets. Oh, come on, I just want to go down in here. Um, the rainbow bullets look beautiful now, but... Uh, rainbow guns. Do, 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 do. And there was nothing down here. Ow. Ah, yep, okay. Let's, let's go, let's go. That was kind of a mean tunnel. Okay, so swarms. Here is here is a thing that has been changed. So swarms will no longer appear just anywhere in the level like they used to and swarm around themselves. They now swarm around pickups. Um, you only find them on pickups. Not all pickups will have them, uh, but uh, if there is a swarm, there is a pickup. Um, which actually, I guess, is not 100% true. If you collect the pickup without destroying the swarm, the swarm will just go flying off somewhere on its own, uh, moving around exactly like they used to before this update. Uh, so, um, anyway, so I, I changed that about swarms, and I did that because swarms before, I just felt like they were annoying. They just kind of moved around. Um, you know, they were annoying to kill them all because they're small and they move fast, but you kind of wanted to kill them because you know they might drop loot, and they are worth points, although I don't, I don't know. I, I don't play this game for points, but... It's a roguelike. I guess you're su supposed to. Let's put that in quotes. Um, uh, but anyway, so they were there. You felt compelled to destroy them, but they were annoying to kill. Uh, and actually, because there were so many of them, I had decreased their drop rate. The average size for Swarm, I believe, was 11 uh, members. So I made them have a, an 11th of the chance of dropping uh, goodies, because I didn't want you to just get tons of goodies from destroying them. Which, But that just makes them more annoying, because then you kill a bunch of them, and, and what did you get for it? almost nothing. So anyway, now they don't drop loot at all. They don't give you points at all. Um, but they will appear around these goodies that you already want and already give you points. Um, and again, not all goodies, but some. And it has a funny effect. So the reason why I kind of created a, a few new games to find the perfect one, because uh, I wanted to show off in water all the bubbles. Uh, since enemies give off bubbles, Swarms have always given off just like huge bubbles. You, you'd see a, a cloud of bubbles rising from below like this maybe and you would know that there's a swarm Now because you know there's a swarm, you know, there's a pickup And so it's kind of a funny way to locate goodies. I mean you're gonna look there anyway, but I like that like advance notice that, that you'll sometimes get like You see bubbles like oh good. There's fuel here um, 
So that's really fun. I think that's great. Uh, it was a funny side effect. I didn't even consider it. And it's really pronounced in lava because everything just moves so slowly. I said they don't appear again around every uh, pickup, but they're trying to make fires of me because they've been around a lot of them. Um, and did I get my upgrade point? Cool. So they've been entirely changed. Um, I also changed how they, the timer that they used to spawn. So it, it probably is not clear at all. But in the very first sector, sector zero, um, all damage to your holds reduced by 25%. Sure, let's do that. Uh, in the first sector, in the zeroth sector, uh, enemies spawn, I believe, once every two to three seconds. It'll try to find a, a suitable place to spawn an enemy, and different enemies have different requirements on, on what's suitable. Uh, most enemies move through walls, so they don't care, but there's like those enemies that crawl along the edges of walls, and so they need to find an empty tile adjacent to a non-empty tile, and blah, blah, blah. Um, swarms, though, they, they operate completely separately now. They used to be on that same timer, um, but now just completely randomly, uh, approximately every two seconds, but it could happen more or less, I, I just left it totally up to chance, um, it will try to spawn a swarm somewhere. In, in addition to the, you know, that doesn't reset the monster summoning cooldown or anything, it's completely in addition. Um, and they will try to, to go by nearby pickups. And I actually had a really funny uh, bug actually related to that. And I'll talk about this new forest type shortly. Uh, but it used to be that because they were on that completely separate timer, if you were just sitting fighting enemies like I'm doing now, and there was a pickup just off screen that a swarm could spawn on, and maybe it was the only uh, collectible a swarm could spawn on, then you'd finally go find it and there would just be this huge swarm uh, because it had just kept adding swarms, that one pickup, so I had to fix that. See, not every, not every pickup has a swarm. Um, so yeah, I fixed that, but that one does. I like that they deal basically no damage to you. I can't decide if I should change that, because it's almost like, why do we bother? But on lava levels, it's worse, because, uh, you know, you don't regenerate shields in lava. Um, and if you take sufficient damage, in later levels, the swarms are bigger. Um, so you could end up taking a lot of damage doing, you know, that charge through the through the swarms. But let me talk about the trees in this, in this new biome. Um, so it's a new forest palette, I guess you could call it. So the trees, unlike everything else in the game, um, were... Let me just get some trees in view. So it used to be that the end... Where's my mouse? So it used to be that these trees were each a solid graphic trunk and leaves in one, and the trunk was brown and the leaves were green. Most other graphics, I color them in shades of gray, and then in order to tint them so that you, you know, you take a, a white gray rock and you say, I want this rock to be green or, or reddish brown or gray or whatever, and, and they get tinted. But I couldn't do that with the trees because they were in colors. Um, and I couldn't just make them black and white and color them because then the trunk and the leaves would get colored the same. So I had to separate the two. <laughs> Um, and then change the code for placing all these little things on a level and blah, 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 blah. But now we can have different colored trees, which means I can finally do different colored forest biomes. And the first thing I thought to do for some reason, and I'm going to blame the elves, which is why I called this save game Elven Forest, um, was, was a golden, you know, what was it? Was that Lothlorien is supposed to be all golden and wonderful? I don't remember. Um, anyway, so I did a, uh, a golden tree, and, you know, I should do other things. We'll do purple and other colors. Good, there's my upgrade. Uh, I've also done a couple little equipment tweaks. Let's see if I happen to find any of them. Um, uh, mostly armor, I think. So, regenerating armor... Ooh, look at all those alien artifacts. Yeah. Better split faster. Harder, better, faster, and stronger are all adjectives for uh, weapons. Don't know if anyone's noticed. Anyway, uh, so, regenerating armor, uh, which is you know, it's one of the kinds of armors you can get, like embedded armor here. Uh, regenerating armor used to be, it would have the the armor strength. So, like, if, if this embedded armor had instead been regenerating armor, it would be like 15. It could take 15 damage, but regenerate. And I never found that that was worth it. And I don't know... It's, it's hard to say. I feel like that's something that could depend a lot on how skilled the player is. And I think that I need to be balancing for the most skilled players. So if you were maximally skilled, I feel like the regenerating effect of armor, you would take better advantage of that. Um, and, and so that is why I have the armor strength. It's like, it's regenerating, that's really good. But, but at least for me, and I, I'm not going to claim to be the most skilled uh, at this sort of game, 
but I felt that, that the half armor was never worth the regenerating power. So I may need to tweak this later, uh, but basically regenerating armor has received a buff. It, it will absorb more damage. But kind of more interestingly, I mean, that's just one case, um, is any armor now can get additional little effects. So uh, either increased weapon firing speed or increased shield regeneration speed uh, and armor can receive those bonuses even if it you know could be in an embedded armor that also gives you slightly faster weapons and that you know is at a cost it won't have quite as high of an armor rating uh, but you'll have that other effect um, and I am looking for more equipment effects I'm also looking for more weapon effects and I uh, sorry more enemies and I also want to thank a couple guys specifically let me see if I can find that thread if I had been planning properly I would have it already open but I've been posting to Rogue Temple about uh, Mysterious Space and a couple people started posting ideas, and it's awesome. And one guy had posted a video uh, reviewing the game uh, like months and months ago before I started getting reinterested, and it was just amazing to see. And it, it's it's been a, a great help. I mean, uh, one thing that I still haven't addressed uh, that the guy noticed in his video, or he rather he didn't notice, and that was the problem. He did not notice that lava prevented your shields from regenerating, or or at least that was my impression. But I mean, he seemed to be talking about everything that lava did but he didn't mention uh that that it doesn't uh that it prevents sorry God, i can't think of words that it prevents your shields from regenerating and that's important and if he failed to notice that's because the game failed to mention it and i have the little blinking word lava next to your shield but i guess that wasn't enough so uh, it may, i might make the shield bar outline blink red as well to indicate hey it's having an effect on your shield because lava does have a lot of effects and so you might think that you realize them all, because the slowing is the most obvious, right? So, and, I, and I'm always trying to keep aware of those sorts of things. I want the game to be easy to understand, and I was happy that the guy reviewing it was like, yeah, this game is easy to pick up, you know, it's quick to play, it's not super complicated like a lot of roguelikes, partly because it's only kind of, you know, <laughs> you could argue it's not roguelike. Um, I mean, there's other action-y, you know, roguelike-ish games out there. Um, Binding of Isaac, which I've never played. And the other guy who commented and has had ideas on some monsters uh, is, is making a Binding of Isaac-like game. And I will link to both of their things in the description for this video because I want to thank them in every way possible. Uh, so check out that guy's game and check out the other guy's videos that he does. He reviews a lot of roguelikes and, and plays through them and stuff. Uh, but anyway, so the, the guy... I, I wish I had the names again, not properly prepared, but he had some ideas for monster types, which is great because I do need more monsters. I would love to have planet, biome, whatever specific types of monsters. Uh, another thing also real quick, and then I'll stop yammering and not playing. Maybe I'll play at the same time just to make things a little more interesting, is I have made a new liquid. I mentioned that I was recoding how liquids are done. Um, and I did that because I want to add more types of liquids, and I'm adding a new liquid. I don't have a name for it internally. I'm calling it slime, but it's going to be on mining planet. So I'm going to make a new mining type of planet that makes a bunch of pockets underground filled with these, with this new liquid, um, and then shafts from those from those pockets up to the surface with a little building on top. Um, and so that will be a mining planet, and that'll be a very different. You know, I mean, all the planets right now, whether it's ocean or lava or whatever like yeah lava does an interesting different thing but for the most part the exploring and and kind of the tactics of, of how you approach the enemies is, is all the same um and i think a weapon like this with these long shafts going going vertically um will add different sorts of challenges oh sweet i'm glad i played again check out the rainbow weapons the rainbow bullets so good i, I don't know i really love the rainbow effect um <laughs> anyway so uh oh that was sneaky um so yeah, I think that'll be an interesting sort of challenge, you know, it'll make different weapons better, and if you don't have those weapons, or if you don't want to deal with it, you won't go there, or maybe you have weapons that make that easy, and I, I would really love that. I would love if the equipment you had informed your choices on that sector map, uh, you know, as, where to go, as to where to go. Um, and there are those clouds, uh, ooh, clouds of bubbles revealing where there's things. Ah, dead end. Um, so, you know, having a weapon that shoots up and down would make vertical passages work out all right for you. Um, and, you know, maybe I should make weapons that only shoot up and down. That could be interesting as well. And, um, so, I don't know. Um, I, I don't know how exactly to make different level types that would, you know, be favorable to players based on their equipment or their play style. Uh, but if I can figure out anything like that, I, I think that would be great.
Oh, that's such a small swarm. It's almost adorable to call it a swarm. <laughs> so anyway, so that's what I'm working on. I will have another video and hopefully a release of all of the crazy things I've been showing you uh, sometime next week. And with Christmas hitting, I've taken off a lot of days and we'll see. I mean, I've got a friend visiting from town, uh, but I mean, there's going to be some days where I'm just doing nothing, much like today. Um, and so I might unexpectedly get a lot done or, or have some neat release around Christmas. Maybe I should put Christmas trees on the ice planets. I don't know. Um, but anyway, thank you for watching. Uh, thanks again to the guys who have been giving me some feedback on the Rogue Temple forums. And again, I will link to their stuff in the description below. And thanks to anyone playing. And I hope you're having fun, because I'm having fun. <laughs> and I'm gone. Thanks again.